Welcome to our um, Shabbat uh, meal, and um, we are in continuing Leviticus, and the uh, name of the, sh the Parsha is Shemini, which means eighth, and it's taken from Leviticus ninth chapter first verse through verse uh, chapter eleven verse forty seven, and in my Torah it's divided into three sections. The first part is called the Divine Presence in the Sanctuary, Leviticus chapter 9, verse 10, uh, I'm sorry, Leviticus chapter 9, 1 through chapter 10, 20. And the second part is called per, uh, Permitted and Forbidden Foods, Leviticus 11, chapter verse 1 through 23. And the third part is defilement from animal carcasses, Leviticus 11th chapter, verse 24 through verse 47. And it reads, Vayihu beyom hashemini kara Moses leaharon u levanav u ulis zakani Yisrael, veyomo el Aaron, kak lacha agul bein bakar lechatat veail leala tamimam ve hakariv lefne Adonai. On the eighth day, Moses called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. He said to Aaron, take a calf of the herd for a sin offering and a ram for the burnt offering without blemish and bring them before the Lord. Psalm 119, Aleph. Blessed are the undefiled in the, in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with a whole heart. They also do no iniquities. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect on, upon all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. I will keep thy statutes. O oh, forsake me not utterly. This is the word of the Lord. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. May your kingdom come, and may your will be done. We give thanks to you, Lord God, for bringing us to and into another Shabbat, another time to rest and remember our freedom, and to remember that we are no longer slaves, but we are free to worship and to enjoy the God who created, and the, and the God, and to acknowledge him for what he has done. For you have brought our brethren, the Jews, out of Egypt, and you have taken them out of bondage and gave and made them free men and gave them a day to acknowledge that great freedom. And it's this day, Lord, this Sabbath that you brought us into and brought them into. And Christ Jesus also paid the penalty on the cross and died on our behalf that we may be free and free to worship the God who created and, the, and his son who came for us, that we may know that God is, that, that we may know who God is. And we both, our brethren, the Jews and ourselves, celebrate this day in worship and praise and in rest because we are free. And not only are we free, Lord, but we are free to welcome you into this world for you have made us free and you seek to live in us. 
and in this world. And we have made room for you, Lord God. And may we continue to do so. For on this day you have made us free. And we give thanks to the God and his Son and the Spirit. Amen. Barukata Adonai Elohedu Melohalam Hamotzi Lekemi Sawart. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gives us bread from the earth. Barukata Adonai Elohedu Melu Halam Bere Prihagathem. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gives us the fruit of the vine. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat 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 shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shabbat shalom. Shabbat 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 shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat 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 shalom. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom, Judith. And this Shabbat, we continue in Leviticus, where that remember last week they were sanctifying or dedicating or setting aside the Kohanim in order to be able to worship um, in the Beit HaMikdash of the temple. And it took, it was a seven day process. And so now we come to um, this part that's entitled uh, The Divine Presence in the Sanctuary. And that's Leviticus 9, 1 through chapter 10, 20. And um, Uh, I tell you what, I'll read from uh, Leviticus 9 and you read Leviticus um, for, uh, 1 through uh, 10, 1 through 20. Well, okay. How about that? Okay. Is that reasonable? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. On the eighth day, Moses called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. He said to Aaron, take a calf of the herd for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering without blemish and bring them before the Lord. And speak to the Israelites saying, take a he goat for a sin offering, a calf and a lamb, yearlings without blemish for a burnt offering, and an ox and a ram for an offering of well-being to sacrifice before the Lord, and a meal offering with oil mixed in. For today the Lord will appear to you. They brought to the front of the tent of the meeting 
the things that Moses had commanded. And the whole community came forward and stood before the Lord. Moses said, This is what the Lord has commanded that you do, that the presence of the Lord may appear to you. Then Moses said to Aaron, Come forward to the altar and sacrifice your sin offering and your burnt offering, making expiation for yourself and for the people, and sacrifice the people's offering and make expiation for them as the Lord has commanded. Aaron came forward on the altar and slaughtered his calf of sin offering. Aaron's sons brought the blood to him. He dipped his finger in the blood and put it on the horns of the altar. And he poured out the, uh, the rest of the blood at the base of the altar, the fat, the kidneys, and the protuberance of the liver from the sin offering. He turned into smoke on the altar as the Lord had commanded Moses. And the flesh and the skin were consumed in fire outside the camp. Then he slaughtered the burnt offering. Aaron's sons passed the blood to him, and he dashed it against all sides of the altar. They passed the burnt offering to him in sections, as well as the head, and he turned it into smoke on the altar. He washed the entrails and the legs and turned them into smoke on the altar with the burnt offering. Next, he brought forward the people's offering. He took the goat for the people's sin offering and slaughtered it and presented it as a sin offering like the previous one. He brought forward the burnt offering and sacrificed it according to regulation. He then brought forward the meal offering and taking a handful of it, he turned it into smoke on the altar. In addition to the burnt offering of the morning, he slaughtered the ox and the ram, the people's sacrifice of well-being. Aaron's sons passed the blood to him which he dashed against the side of the altar, and the fat parts of the ox and the ram, and the broad tail, the covering fat, the kidneys, and the protuberance of the livers. They laid these fat parts over the breast, and Aaron turned the fat parts into smoke on the altar, and waved the breast and the right thigh thighs as a wave offering before the Lord as Moses had commanded. Aaron lifted his hands toward the people and blessed them, and he stepped down after the offering, the sin offering, the burnt offering, and the offering of the well-being. Moses and Aaron then went inside the tent of meeting. When they came out, they blessed the people, and the presence of the Lord appeared to all the people. Fire came forth from before the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the fat parts in the altar. And all the people saw and shouted and fell on their faces. Now Aaron's son and Nadab and Abihu each took his fire pan, put fire in it, and laid incense on it. And they offered before the Lord alien fire, which he had not enjoined upon them. And the fire came forth from the Lord and consumed them. Thus they died. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm was. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just going because I, 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 I saw Nadab and Abihu and I just yeah. started. Go ahead, darling. I'm sorry. Okay, I'll start too. And there went out fire from the Lord and, dev and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nearest me, and before all the people I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. And Moses called Mishalai, and Elzephan, the sons of Uzi, uh, Uzzah, Zelel, the uncle of Aaron, and said unto them, Carry, uh, come near, carry your brethren from before the, uh, sac before the sanctuary of, uh, before the sanctuary out of the camp. So they came, so, so, so they went near and carried them in their coats out of the camp, as Moses had said. And Moses said unto Aaron, and unto Eleazar, and unto Isamar, the sons, uh, his sons, Uncover not your head, neither rend your clothes, lest ye die, and lest wrath come upon all the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, bewail the burning which the Lord has kindled. 
And ye shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. For the, for the anointing oil of the Lord is upon you, and they did according to the word of Moses. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine, nor strong drink, thou nor thy sons with thee, when ye go into the temple of the congregation, lest ye die. It shall be statute forever throughout your generations. And that ye may put the difference between holy and unholy, and between unclean and clean, and that ye may teach the children of Israel all the statutes which the Lord has spoken unto them by the hand of Moses. And Moses spake unto Aaron and to Eleazar and to uh, Ithamar, his son, that sons that were left, take the meat offering that remaineth of the offerings of the Lord made by fire, and eat it without leaven beside the altar, for it is most holy. And ye shall eat it in the holy place, because it is uh, thou thy due, and thy sons do for the sacrifices of the Lord made by fire, for so I am commanded. And the wave breast and heave shoulder shall ye eat in a clean place, thou and thy sons and thy daughters are with thee, for they, for they be thy due, and thy sons do, which is given out of the sacrifices of peace offerings of the children of Israel. Uh, the wave shoulder and the wave breast shall they bring unto the way uh, bring with, with the offerings made by fire of the fat, to wave it for a wave offering before the Lord, and it shall be thine and thy sons, with thee by a statute forever, as the Lord has commanded. And Moses diligent, diligently sought the goat of the sin offering, and behold, it was burnt, and he was angry with Eleazar and with Ithamar, the sons of Aaron, which were left alive, saying, Wherefore have thou not eaten the sin offerings in the holy place, seeing it is the most holy, and God has given it you to bear the iniquities of the congregation, to make atonement for them before the Lord? Behold, the blood of it was not brought in unto the holy place. Ye shall indeed you should indeed have eaten it in the holy place, as I commanded. And Aaron said unto Moses, Behold, this day have they offered their sin offering and their burnt offerings before the Lord, and such, and such things have befallen us. And if I had eaten the sin offering today, should it not, should it have been accepted? in the sight of the Lord. And Moses heard that he was content. Okay. Um, okay. We start with the, the, the divine presence. And um, this is the eighth day after the seventh day that they're consecrating. And this is the eighth day. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they're given instructions about the, um, uh, the offerings for that day. And uh, the, the whole community comes forward and it says it stood before the Lord. But then um, the presence of the uh, Lord did not immediately uh, appear or, uh, or come forth. And after they went into the sanctuary, and I, and I have read a commentary on this, that they went into uh, the sanctuary, <coughs> excuse me, to make expiation again. Um, and then the, he, they came back out, and then that's when the um, um, fire from the, uh, heaven came and consumed uh, the sacrifices. And uh, the 
it say the glory of the Lord? The glory of the Lord appeared before uh, Israel. Um, I, I guess one of the biggest things that I noticed is that the entire community uh, wit witnessed this. And um, in t verse 22, it says the presence of the, excuse me, the presence of the Lord uh, um, Aaron blessed them, lifted up his hands toward the people and blessed them. And then a fire came forth from the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the fat parts. Of it. And all the people saw it and they fell on their faces. Okay, yeah, that, um, I, I mentioned this a little last week because they used different words for the people. Mine used the word congregation was near. And there were a lot of people, and I don't know how close they got and they, or when they saw it or how, how the arrangement was. But it had to have been something very um, awesome, I'll use that word, and very, a lot of emotion was going on. And um, this is what is happening here is that uh, the, the priest, uh, office is being inaugurated mm -hmm. and prior to this God set forth the rules and what the duties the priests were to do and they were pretty straightforward very I'm going to say very rigid they had boundaries there were some certain things a priest could do and certain things the priest could not do in his role as priest unlike um, Moses who was uh, a prophet and the roles of prophet uh, will change from time to time depending on the circumstances of the people, what's needed, mm -hmm. whether or not they need encouragement or whether or not they need correction. Those are the things that the, the prophet does. He gives warnings and stuff like that. But in the office of the priest, the priest has a very rigid uh, process they must follow. And this was part of um, the reasoning one of the teachers explained as to why Aaron's sons were um, were killed uh, because they did something out of sight of the role of the priest right. and something that, uh, that priests were not allowed to do. Now he also he compared that to what Moses had done. Well, the, the, it said the the the, the uh, Aaron's sons did something spontaneous and compare that to what Moses had done which was spontaneous when he broke the Ten Commandments and essentially God consented to that but he the, the teachers reasoning was well the roles were different Moses was a prophet and prophets don't have more of a free hand than 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 um, than priests he also compared that to uh, back in Genesis in the creation of the world where essentially two accounts of creation is given. First one in verse one where basically it sets up boundaries and limits and that, those kinds of things. And he c compares that to the role of the priest, the priest of boundaries. Mm -hmm. Certain prayers that the, I guess in Jewish culture that are made or are, are the same um, morning and evening and they call those priestly prayers now our private prayers um, are, are not so rigid we pray pray for other things we pray for other people too and those are called um, almost prophet I'm going to call it prophet prayers because I can't pronounce the word right so when we pray we have a, a priestly prayer that we pray in public and then the private prayers are more prophetic prophetic uh, prayers that we offer in, in private and we can do both because there's no temple you know so essentially you have to do both um, because there isn't a temple and that explains why um, I don't want to say why um, but that could explain uh, 
the reasoning behind the death of um, Nahab and Abihu. Nahab and Abihu. Yeah, they just got caught up in the situation. Nadab. Nadab. Yeah, they just got caught up in it, and they offered um, or said something that was off limits to the priests, mm -hmm. and that that's why they acted as prophets and not priests. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also in here, um, one verse where it says that uh, Aaron, uh, God talked to Aaron. Um, doesn't go into a lot of detail of how he spoke to Aaron, perhaps not on the same level as he spoke to Moses, but verse 8, uh, chapter 9, mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, saying, and he told him uh, certain things about drinking or not drinking. And that's when he's working as the priest. One other thing here, and I think I underlined this from, from last year. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a line that said, um, I just saw it underlined here earlier. Mm, not seeing it now. Okay, um, that's all I have for this. Oh, I'm sorry. Here we go. I drew a line this way. Mm -hmm. Uh, still goes back to um, the death of the two sons. Then Moses said unto Aaron, uh, this is that the Lord spake. And I don't know when the Lord said it. Mm -hmm. uh, I will be sanctified in them that come nearest me mm -hmm. and be and before all the people. And uh, I will be glorified. And said Aaron held his peace. Um, here, this uses the phrase "all the people," not necessarily the assembly or the congregation. Um, maybe it's talking about even all people now. Uh, I will be glorified, and I will be sanctified in them that come nearest me. So, um, uh, I, 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 actually, I was still thinking about this that. Yeah, you know, they whatever they did uh, caused them to die right on the spot. Yeah, and I and it was so bad that there's no real detail going. It's not very detailed. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to say compared that, but I thought of another scripture when uh, Noah got drunk and his kids covered him up because of something we say sexual, and it mm -hmm. was something so bad. Scripture didn't even mention it. Um, here they did something um, that scripture doesn't mention um, but if you're taking into account their role as, prof, uh, as priests and they're being inaugurated and God just appeared to them um, they acted spontaneously and priests cannot act spontaneous they have to not when you're dealing with um, the presence of the Lord right not when you bring the presence of the Lord you're carrying the sins of the people mm -hmm. you can't uh, act spontaneously okay but that's all I have for that one okay we'll go to the second part uh, the dietary laws from Leviticus 11 chapter 1 to 23 you know and I'll read that. That's not very long. Not very long at all. I think this goes up to 47. No. We have, it's divided into three parts. Oh, okay. This is the second part. The second, the third part is from uh, Leviticus um, 11, 24 through 47. Okay. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron saying to them, speak to the Israelite people thus, these are the creatures that you may eat from among all the land animals. Any animal that has true hooves with clefts 
through the hooves and that claws uh, choose the cud, such as you may eat. And the following, however, of those that either chew the cud or have hoofs, you shall not eat. The camel, although it chews the cud, it has no true hoofs. It is unclean for you. The daemon, although it chews the cud, it has no true hoofs. It is, a, it is unclean for you. The hare, although it chews the cud, it is uh, it has no uh, true hoofs. It is unclean for you. And the swine, although it has hooves with the hooves cleft through, it does not chew the cud. It is unclean for you. You shall not eat of their flesh or touch their carcasses. They are, they are unclean for you. These you may eat of all that live in water, anything in water, whether in the seas or in the streams that has fins and scales, these you may eat. But anything in the seas or in the streams that has no fins and scales among all the swarming things of the water and among all the other living creatures that are in the water, they are an abomination for you. And an abomination for you, they shall remain. You shall not eat of their flesh and you shall uh, uh, abominate the uh, abominate their ca uh, carcasses. Everything in water that has no fins and scales shall be an abomination for you. The following you shall abominate among the birds; they shall not be eaten. They are an abomination: the eagle, the vulture, and the black vulture, the kite, falcons of every variety and all varieties of raven, the ostrich, the night hawk, the seagull, hawks of every variety, the little owl, the Cormorant, the great owl, the white owl, the pelican, the bustard, the stork, herons of every variety, the, the hoopy and the bat, all winged swarming things that walk on fours shall be an abomination for you. But these you may eat among all the winged swarming things that walk on all fours, all that have above their feet jointed legs to leap on the ground of these you may eat the following locusts of every variety all varieties of bald locusts crickets of every variety and all varieties of grasshopper but other winged swarming things that have four legs shall be an abomination for you and um, in my notes I refer to Acts 10 and the dream of Peter um, and saying there had been a misunderstanding in the church of what Acts uh, 10 means. It thought it's in the church is commonly uh, um, stated that uh, that meant that we, that dream of Peter that we could eat anything. But if you were read the entire uh, transaction of the entire How episode, long um, How long is it? Uh, Acts 10. Yeah, with the uh, animals and stuff. Hold on, let's see. Let me let me let me just pull it up on my because uh, maybe I can condense it. Or at least read the part where it clearly states that it's not talking about food. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see if I can if I can find that part. Um, but I would imagine, I bet some uh, of the church will probably eat pork, but they won't eat grasshoppers mm -hmm. or, or locusts. And no, 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 I'm not eating that. I was in uh, those you can freely eat, and um, interesting. Oh, maybe I, I may have made it. Oh, I was just curious to know what kind of animal. I don't know if it. Oh, it did say all kind, but even now we don't eat all kinds of animals because you know, Americans don't eat horses. Mm -hmm. They don't eat dogs or cats. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they would look funny on you if if you did, or you said you did. But if they and say, well, I don't want to eat pork, then they say, well, oh, you're just a legalist. And wait a minute. Oh, it's through 11. I should have said X 10 through 11. Hold on a minute. Let me just, let me just oh. quickly read. It's 11 where he... Uh, sees the, gets the dream and sees the animal. X 
he has um he has a vision in the first part of um in ten uh, at nine he says the next day they went up on a journey and he drew near uh and it drew near the sixth hour and he um, became hungry and wanted to eat but while they made ready he fell into a trance and saw heaven open and an object like a great sheet bound at the corner four corners descending to him and let down to the earth in it were all kinds of four uh, footed animals of the earth wild beasts creeping things and birds of the air and a voice came to him rise peter kill and eat but peter said not so lord for i have never eaten anything common or unclean and the voice spoke to him again the second time what god has cleansed you must not call common this was done three times and the object was taken into heaven now the, where okay went down to the man okay and in uh, oh and and where the explanation for the for the um it's x 10 i think it's 24 i think it's 24 not 11 24 yes 24 and x um 10 24 mm -hmm. um um It says, he entered, okay. Now, step to him. I just had it. It's in, um, oh, right here. Um, meets Cornelius and then the following day and then it, well that explains Cornelius falls down at his feet and then um, then he said um, you know how awful it is for him to keep company with or go to another one of another nation and that's but God has shown me that I should not call any man comma or, or unclean that's Peter talking about the vision he right. has, whereas yeah. it, it wasn't talking about animals, it was talking about men. Right. And he says, therefore I came without objection as soon as I was sent for. I asked them, for what reason have you sent for me? And so it, yeah, it was, it's not talking about food. If you read the whole entire, uh, it's talking about the Gentiles, that they are no longer unclean, that you can, it's okay to preach the gospel to them. Mm -hmm. So it does, it's not talking about food. Right. Right. <laughs> so, uh, whereas this is very clear about what foods we can eat and mm -hmm. uh, we cannot eat. Mm -hmm. Okay. And grasshoppers and lime. So I'll get you some tomorrow. Yes. Some grasshoppers. Grasshoppers and locusts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Chocolate covered. All right. Anything else? Uh, no. Okay. All right. And then we go to the third part defilement and purification. Leviticus chapter 11, 24 through 40. Seven, and I'll take care if you take care. Okay. I'll do. You do twenty-four through twenty-four through thirty-four. All right. <clears throat> okay. And of these, ye shall be. And uh, uh, I'm sorry. And for these, ye shall be unclean. Whoever touches the carcass of them shall be unclean until evening. And whoever uh, beareth aught of the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until evening. The carcass of every beast which divides the hoofs and is not un uh, which is not club-footed, nor chew the cud, are unclean unto you. Every one that touches them shall be unclean, and whoever goeth unto his his paws among all manner of beasts that go on all four, those are unclean unto you. Whoso touches their carcass shall be unclean until even, and he that bears the carcass of them 
shall wash his clothes and be unclean until evening. Uh, they are unclean unto you. These are these also shall be unclean unto you among the creeping things that creep upon the earth, the weasel and the mouse and the tortoise after his kind, and the ferret and the charmelo and the lizard and the snail and the mole. These are unclean to you among all that creeps. Whosoever thus touches them when they be dead shall be unclean until evening. And unto whatever any of them which they are dead uh, doth fall, it shall be unclean, whether it be a be any vessel of wood or raiment or skin or sack. Whatsoever vessel it be within any work is done, it must be put into water, and it shall be unclean until even. So it shall be unclean. And every earthen vessel were unto any of these uh, when any of them falleth whatsoever it is shall be unclean and ye shall break it of all meat which may be eaten that on which such water cometh shall be unclean and all drink that may be drank in every Uh, such vessel shall be unclean. Um, oh, where did you leave off? 34? 30, uh, I did 34, 35. Okay. You, did thir you did 35? No, I did 34. Okay. Everything on which the carcass of any of them falls shall be unclean. An oven or a stove shall be smashed. They are unclean and unclean they shall remain for you. However, a spring or a cistern in which water is collected shall be clean. But whoever touches such a carcass in it shall be unclean. If such a carcass falls into seed grain that is to be sown, it is clean. But if water is put on the seed and any part of a carcass falls upon it, it shall be unclean for you. If an animal that you may eat has died, anyone who touches its carcass shall be unclean until evening. Anyone who eats of its carcass shall wash his clothes and remain unclean until evening. Anyone who carries its carcass shall wash his clothes and remain unclean until even. All the things that swarm upon the earth are an abomination. They shall not be eaten. You shall not eat among all things that swarm upon the earth anything that crawls on its belly or anything that walks on fours or anything that has many legs, for they are an abomination. You shall not draw abomination upon yourselves through anything that swarms, you shall not make yourselves unclean therewith, and thus become unclean. For I, the Lord, am your God. You shall sanctify yourselves, and be holy, for I am holy. You shall not make yourselves unclean through any swarming thing that moves upon the earth. For I am the Lord, for I, the Lord, am he who brought you up from the land of Egypt to be your God, and you shall be holy, for I am holy. These are the instructions concerning animals, birds, all living creatures that move in water, and all creatures that swarm on earth. For the distinguishing between the unclean and the clean, between the living things that may be eaten and the living things that may not be eaten. And that's the end of that part. Part of this, I think, also <coughs> that takes into account uh, sanitary laws. If you touch something dead, you wash your hands. Mm -hmm. So this is part of that uh, also, so you don't spread diseases and things mm -hmm. of, that, of that nature. But it is to to make you, to set you apart, to say, yes, you're different. All things are not permitted. There are boundaries in this world. Mm -hmm. And um, and there's, there's still boundaries. There's certain things we can't do. And distinguish between unclean and clean as a reminder that there's uh, there's a distinction that there's certain things we can do and we can't do mm -hmm. because God is holy yep. that's I think that's we, we may not understand why God wants us to follow these rules 
but he says it's because he's holy mm -hmm. and evidently he doesn't want any part of what he's telling you um, mm -hmm. not to do so therefore you should do it if you're going to be holy as he is holy mm -hmm. um, it was uh, uh, someone had a cartoon or on Facebook this week and I'd seen it before but it kind of bring home the point of what these instructions mean in the first frame is a guy and there's a fence and he's jumping over the fence and there's a guy on the other side he says stop he said God's laws um, are meant to to uh, uh, um, uh, be beneficial to you and then uh, the next frame is on the other side of the fence is a cliff and <laughs> the fence represents God's laws by jumping over God's laws or refusing to obey them, we're jumping over a cliff. <laughs> and that 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 puts it very succinctly, succinctly, that God's laws are not meant to be, uh, uh, they're meant to be a border, a border from danger. Mm -hmm. That's what they're meant to be. They're not punitive. They uh, are God saying, this is not good. And if you continue to jump over these laws, you will suffer the consequence. So. Mm -hmm. I think that's it in a nutshell that God is holy and and if we want to be with him um, because he's holy he's he's easily spelled out what things that prevent you from being a part of him if you uh, if you do these things these uh, things that he said not to do so. anything else? well I'm sure I'm reading your your hand out here hmm and uh, number two says many kosher laws are regarded as chicken, uh, shakin, or laws from God which have no rational explanation. Mm -hmm. They are obeyed from a sense of trust and loyalty, not because they make sense to us. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, some people have attempted to discover reasons for these laws. For instance, some say that they are intended to promote hygiene and biological cleanliness in the camp. That's kind of what I said. Mm -hmm. Others have said they have, they were designed to sanitize our hearts. Uh, if you make, uh, if we must take away life in order to sustain ours, we should be conscious of the sacrifice and and humanity and humane in the way we do it. So this one has to do with uh, trying to rationalize the laws as opposed to just obeying uh, God oh, as a sense of trust and loyalty. Right. Just obeying God. Yeah. Uh, they are obedient from a sense of trust and loyalty as opposed to mm -hmm. some other reason. Uh, okay, but that's the last comment I have. Okay. Well, that's it for this week. And the parasha for next week. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. I hate to... Go ahead. Since we're recording it. One question is here. Uh, did Paul eat pork? Mm -hmm. Which I'm sure came after the dream. And they, they give a two-word answer. Highly unlikely. Yes, highly <laughs> yeah. unlikely. Because they knew what it meant. They knew what the dream meant. The dream, mm -hmm. again, for Gentiles, they probably assumed that, oh, that means we can eat anything, but mm -hmm. no. It had nothing to do with eating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you read the whole, the, the ver, uh, chapter 10 and 11 of Acts, completely, you'll quickly find out it has nothing to do with eating. The dream, Peter's dream mm -hmm. about the animals. Right. Nothing to right. do with the, uh, right. eating at all. It had to do with the message of God. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So next week is called Tazria, Leviticus uh, 12, verse 1 through 13, um, 59. And I have there's some notes made here. Um, uh, hopefully that's uh, all of it. Um, Tazria defilement through childbirth is the first part. And it begins. The Yedaver Adonai El Moshe Lamor, the Ber El Bene Yusra El Lamor, Isha Kitasria, 
we yalda um zakar u tam tame shiv a yamim kimi nedat dot ta tetma i hope i read that right because it's not my glasses the lord spoke to moses saying Speak to the Israelite people thus, when a woman at childbirth bears a male, she shall be unclean seven days. She shall be unclean as at the time of her menstrual infirmity. Okay. All right, and uh, I gave you the, some words. I, I was a little, I was, um, uh, Found the song sheet, so I came up with a song for us. And I may have to start it, you'll remember it. We'll sing, um, we're going to sing it in Hebrew. And I'm going to sing it. Uh, the transliteration is the, at the top. And they sing this sh um, song on Shabbat, usually in Israel Shalom Alechem. You know what shalom means and mm, peace, yeah, peace be unto you the translation is peace be unto you you ministering angels angels of the most high ye that come from the supreme king of kings the holy one blessed be he and it says it's to be sung or recited friday upon coming home before kiddush well some people say malachi hashalom instead of malachi hasheret um, but we are going to sing, uh, we're going to sing this one little verse twice. I'm going to sing it one time through and the transliteration is the first paragraph to the top. And so we'll sing that and I'll sing it first through and then I'll start it second time. You can sing it with me. Shalom Aleichem, Malakeh Hasharet. Because he created the the all that there is in six days, and on the seventh day he rested. So this is a, a hollow day. And a few weeks ago, John invited the Lord to be with us. And so we again invite him to be with us on this day to teach us the things that we need to know for the coming week. Because in the way the world is going now, we need his presence. We need the Holy Spirit to um, uh, give us truth. And we need his wisdom. So we pray for his wisdom. We pray that he will be with us here today and will impart to us the things that we need for the coming week. That he will just be here. His presence alone here with us um, is enough to mm -hmm. uh, give us what we need and that we will have great peace and rest on this day. And that he will open our hearts and minds to what he has to teach us because he is here with us. He is near to us on this day and so we ask him to um, just uh, show his uh, show us his glory um, as he showed to Moses um, so we uh, thank you for joining us and we say Shabbat Shalom and Shavuot Tov have a good week Shabbat Shalom Shavuot Tov